So you're dealing with symptoms acutely after a concussion, or you're stuck with lingering symptoms after a concussion, maybe brain fog, fatigue, poor sleep. Did you know that the right supplements may actually target those symptoms directly and speed up your recovery? Uh, so there's a lot of new sexy research about this. I kind of wanted to walk through what I think are the five most effective supplements for concussion recovery that are backed by the evidence. Hi there, I'm Dr. Mark. I'm a naturopathic doctor and concussion specialist specialized in concussion and PCS recovery. Over the past five years, I've worked with hundreds of athletes and individuals who recover faster and more completely after their head injuries. So concussions don't always just heal on their own. There's a good percentage of people that'll just kind of, they'll get hit, they'll feel gross for a while and they, they go on their merry way. And then there's a good percentage of people that don't do that. And that's why you know, concussion specialists and re rehab professionals like me exist. And in that case, you need the right interventions. And part of that is going to be doing your own Dr. Google homework and finding all these supplements and these success stories. And does this work? And does that work? These five supplements we're going to talk about today address the root causes and sort of the pathophysiology of concussion, inflammation, energy deficits, poor gut brain connections, structural support. We're going to look at the evidence-based ones so that you can kind of filter through the noise and look at these five is kind of your starting point. So let's start this off. You're going to find that this list is sort of underwhelming. We're not talking about sexy different peptides or different, you know, biohacking tools. For starters, we're going to talk about omega-3s. So your omega-3 fatty acids, your DHA, and your EPA. These are critical for reducing inflammation and actually promoting brain repair. Your brain is a ton of fat, and a ton of that fat, like 20% of that fat, is going to be omega-3s. And then of that 20% omega-3s, a bunch is going to be DHA, like a hundredfold more DHA than EPA. So when your brain is injured, it triggers this inflammatory response, this neurometabolic cascade that can functionally damage and stretch your neurons. So omega-3s, again, particularly DHA, is essential for rebuilding and maintaining the structure of your neuronal membranes, your nerve cell membranes. They also can sort of suppress and regulate these inflammatory cytokines, these uh, inflammatory cell signals. They can reduce lipid peroxidation. So basically the free radical damage, the oxidative damage of these nerve membranes, the reason you take antioxidants. So DHA, EPA can help with that. And while a lot of nutritional supplement data is in animals, omega-3s are cool because we're starting to see much more human data. So a study involving NCAA football players uh, found that daily omega-3 supplementation actually reduced a marker of an inconsistent marker, but a marker of brain damage called neurofilament light chain, uh, ironically named, abbreviated NFL. Um, and so this is a key biomarker of axonal injury, so the axon of your nerve cell. Um, and this reduction is linked to, this reduction in NFL is linked to faster cognitive recovery and improved uh, white matter integrity in the brain. When we look at dosing, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you to go check out my omega-3 index video because we want to supplement omega-3s based on the omega-3 index. There is a range of omega-3s and a level of omega-3s we want you to have for not only uh, optimal you know, concussion recovery, but for heart health, for long-term brain health, for immune health, and all this other fun stuff. So next up is creatine, and this might be the king of the brain supplements right now. It's, it's sexy, it's hot, it's making its way through all the podcasts. Everyone is talking about it. Creatine is just an energy molecule. It, it helps support energy production. And when I say energy, a lot of people think that it's a stimulant. It's not. It's not like caffeine where it's going to kind of ramp you up. It's just going to provide this background support for creatine, creatine phosphate, donates phosphate to create ATP. So it's there to generate ATP to generate energy if you need it. And what we know about concussion is that concussion disrupts brain energy metabolism. It disrupts brain energy production by impairing your mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. And so we lose ATP production. We lose, we drop ATP levels. And that can leave you feeling mentally and physically drained. Uh, what we're seeing is that creatine theoretically, and now in some more research, can actually replenish ATP stores, reduce oxidative stress, and protect your neurons, your nerve cells from further damage by enhancing their energy to deal with the injury. So specific to concussion research shows that supplementation can improve memory, executive function, and sort of the cognitive domains. And it can also still within the cognitive, but sort of the physical thing that you feel, uh, sort of the fatigue that you feel after the injury. In a study looking at adolescents, we also saw that headaches decreased, balance problems decreased, uh, symptoms decreased. So creatine is one of the big needle movers that if there's, uh, you know, four supplements I give a patient, the one that they feel is creatine, even if they only start to feel that they notice the benefit when they stop taking it and then they want to reintroduce it. But creatine is one of the, it's an awesome supplement 
super safe, super researched, and it just supports energy. It just gives your brain some energy to deal with the injury. Next up, let's talk about melatonin. Um, so melatonin is not just for sleep, but it is actually a powerful antioxidant within the brain and can be used for brain healing. Um, so from the sleep perspective though, um, I've done a couple videos, I think at least one video on melatonin now uh, with the new kind of fun edits. From the sleep perspective, sleep is crucial for recovery, but many patients struggle with sleep, insomnia, poor sleep quality, not waking up rested after concussion, and melatonin can help with that by regulating your sleep-wake cycle. And then the antioxidant side of it is going to reduce oxidative damage and enhance neuronal repair. This may be particularly important during the first few months of your concussion recovery. This will be the only supplement that I talk about dosing because I've done another video talking about dosing. But when you take melatonin for sleep, you want to take it actually three hours before your bedtime. So you want to go to bed at 10 p.m. Take your melatonin at 7 p.m. It's not going to knock you out at 7 p.m., but it's going to help with sleep onset, sleep quality later when you go to bed at 10 p.m. And the dose that you'll typically see for sleep is anywhere between half a milligram to three milligrams. That in and of itself is super physiologic. That is way more than your brain actually produces on its own. Uh, but one to three milligrams, 0.5 to three milligrams is typically what you'll see in the re sleep research. If you're looking for post-concussion recovery, you can take that and go three to 10 milligrams. Um, and the reason being is once you go above three milligrams, you're not gonna see more sleep benefits, uh, but you're gonna see more of that antioxidant function of melatonin. We typically say don't go over 10 milligrams unless your doctor prescribes. There are times where I'll prescribe more than that, uh, but don't go over 10 milligrams because that may, depending on certain factors, cause daytime drowsiness, may impact your sleep-wake cycle. There's not a lot of evidence to suggest it impacts your sleep-wake cycle, but we don't want to risk it. And so, again, 3 to 10 is sort of what we say in the post-concussion world, uh, but talk with your doctor before doing any of that. Last thing we're going to look at is uh, probiotics and how they relate to the gut-brain axis. And this is a connection that we shouldn't ignore in the post-concussion world. We know that your gut-brain axis is disrupted within as fast as 2, uh, but 2 to 8 hours within, uh, within the time frame of the injury occurring. And so we see that the inflammation from the brain makes its way to the gut, back to the brain, back to the gut. And this sort of feed forward loop of inflammation can be a background problem in your concussion and post-concussion. And so probiotics are a supplemental way to augment what you're doing with your diet, moving away from a Western diet towards a more whole foods. I, you know, if you were to label it a Mediterranean diet, you can also go ketogenic. You can also go paleo. Mediterranean is sort of the most easy uh, to accomplish socially. If you're going out, if you're from, you know, different cultures, not necessarily American. Mediterranean kind of crosses the most barriers to entry. So that whole ramble was to say that your diet matters more. The prebiotics and the fiber that you're getting from your food is going to do more for your microbiome than probiotics. But probiotics are one of those things that we're seeing have more and more evidence to suggest that this can help break that gut-brain axis loop of inflammation. Animal studies show that probiotic supplementation improves or reduces systemic inflammation, enhances recovery, and then preliminary human trials have reported mood and reduced brain fog after consistent probiotic use. This is again going to be a multi-strain sort of high colony form unit supplement. When you go into the research more on probiotics, it's kind of disheartening because you realize that informing units and sort of these metrics are a bit nebulous. And that's because the research on the gut-brain axis is still very new, very fresh. Everything's sort of correlation. Nothing is causation yet. Um, so again, I would go for the diet first, but if you wanted a high-yield supplement, a good multi-strain high-dose probiotic can help. Last thing we're going to talk about are your polyphenols. And that's a fancy word. If you want specific ones, we would talk about curcumin and resveratrol. So polyphenols are just these phytonutrients, these plant nutrients that are typically very anti-inflammatory, very antioxidant. The reason you take antioxidants is to avoid oxidative stress. So this oxidative stress and neuroinflammation can be major background contributors to concussion and post-concussion, brain fog, headaches, fatigue. And polyphenols can neutralize those free radicals, can neutralize and stop that oxidation to calm down your immune cells in your brain, to calm down the microglia, to calm down the inflammation that's elevated after an injury. Curcumin specifically has been shown to improve cognitive recovery and reduce inflammation when taken consistently. After concussion, we see that it uh, can help prevent excitotoxicity and have uh, all these very good TBI concussion-specific benefits. Uh, we see resveratrol as well, protects the brain cells from oxidative damage, supports long-term memory function. Both curcumin, uh, resveratrol, other polyphenols, other anthocyanins, other fun phytonutrients are going to be doing things to stop the inflammation and oxidation of concussion. So to recap, if you were to look at sort of the top five evidence-based things to look at, I would look at omega-3s, creatine, melatonin, probiotics, polyphenols. 
Are there things like magnesium and acetylcysteine? Yes, yes, yes. Those are all great things. I can't talk about everything, uh, but if I were to pick the five that are accessible, safe, researched, omega-3s, creatine, melatonin, probiotics, polyphenols, curcumin, resveratrol, things like that. The reason these seem to work and seem to be the most evidence-based is they address the three targets of inflammation, energy deficits, and then structural, and whether it's the neuronal membrane or the gut-brain axis, but structural repair. So let me know in the comments if you've tried any of these, uh, if what your experience was, what, was it helpful? Did you notice anything? And also check out my other videos on melatonin, on uh, omega-3s. Uh, they might be helpful adjuncts to, to this video. So if you enjoyed this video, liked it, learned something, go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all the YouTube things. It's free for you. It's super helpful for me. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mark.